Dr. Eric Lindeberg is used to finding practical solutions to thorny problems. Few things stand in his way, not even the harsh winter in his native Norway. So how does he manage to stay upright on his bicycle in the snow and ice? Bike winter tires. While Eric Lindeberg has found the solution that allows him to ride his bike in the winter, he's devoted the last 20 years to working on a far bigger one. How to solve global warming. Industry releases thousands of tonnes of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere every year. Levels have risen so high that climatologists say it's changing our climate, a greenhouse effect that is causing global warming. Eric Lindeberg is one of the pioneers of a technology to remove CO2 from industrial emissions before they enter the atmosphere. Called carbon capture and storage, the technique works by first capturing the carbon dioxide, then transporting it to an underground site and burying it where it gradually dissipates over thousands of years. CCS technology is already in use, but on a small scale only. But will it work on a large scale? Euronews met Eric Lindeberg in Trondheim, Norway, where he and a team of researchers worked to make CCS a global solution to industrial CO2 emissions. The equipment had been turned off for the interview. The fact that so much attention is being um, focused on carbon capture and storage seems to indicate that we're going to continue to burn fossil fuels for the foreseeable future. Today, 80% of all, globally, all the energy that we use is fossil fuels, gas, oil and coal. And there are no signs that this dependence will be reduced in, not in the, even the near future, but even in the far future. And actually there are resources that might last for up to 500 years. That's why we have this huge climate change. If we would stop within a few decades using this, it wouldn't have posed a big threat on the climate. But because of these vast resources and our very, very strong dependence on it. Can carbon capture and storage solve global warming? I think it can be the large solution for the next few hundred years. Because everywhere where we use fossil fuels, nearly, we can take care of CO2 and dispose it. It means that we might have to change some industry, transport industry, we might have changed the things we do today, but uh, I think it's practically possible to take care of most of the CO2 from a technical and economical point of view. There's going to be a cost attached to this, isn't there? Uh, it will be expensive. And uh, the public will see uh, typically an increase in their power cost of 50 to 100 percent if this is deployed in large scale. Uh, but this might still be the cheapest option to solve the climate problem. One of the controversial areas of carbon capture and storage is the storage. You showed me a model which indicated that for most effective storage, it had to be underground for 5,000 years. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, and uh, if you don't store it for that long period of time, and it leaks out, it might create future climate changes that we don't want to see. And uh, 5,000 years is actually the safe storage time to prevent also changes in the, in the far future. Is it possible to store it safely for 5,000 years? Um, the nature has already illustrated for us that buoyant fluids like oil and gas can be stored underground for not only thousands of years, but for millions of years. So we know that this kind of geological structures do exist. And uh, we can also use oil and gas reservoirs for storage, but uh, in the, if this will be large scale industry, this will not be sufficient and we have to go to other structures. So we have to identify similar structures as we store oil and gas, as where nature has stored oil and gas today, and identify them, find their capacity, and uh, see if they are sufficiently tight for our purpose, storing CO2 in 5,000. It's been said that for every problem, there is a solution. Is this true of the many challenges we face this century? Uh, 
As an engineer, when I see a problem, I try to find a solution. And uh, I, th I find that uh, technology can actually provide solutions to very, very many problems that we see. However, I'm also so humble that I also admit that technology not necessarily always have the question, we might use other tools than uh, any engineering to solve it. And in this case, for instance, it is very much a political a solution that is needed. The engineer can present uh, technical solutions and their cost, but it must be politicians that say that, okay, we accept these cost. Voters, please accept, I have a solution to your problem, but sorry, I have to increase your power bill.